For the last month, I've been using Apple's new 12-inch Retina MacBook almost exclusively. Really, the only time I switched to another computer was during video editing sessions because unfortunately, this little machine isn't powerful enough to handle it. Can you really live with a 12-inch display, an Intel Core M processor, and more importantly, zero traditional USB ports? It's lightweight, thin, and super portable, but what makes the case for buying a $1,200 netbook? That's the real question here. The thing is, I managed my expectations going into this whole thing, and I'm perfectly fine with that. As far as design goes, this is as slick as it gets. This computer is so damn thin, Apple had to redesign things to make them fit. First off, this is a fanless MacBook. It doesn't make a peep. There are no moving parts inside. Apple has redesigned the keyboard specifically for this MacBook and utilizes new butterfly switches, which provide a 40% thinner keyboard assembly and 17% larger keys. It's actually a pretty easy keyboard to get used to. I now prefer typing on this keyboard over my 15-inch MacBook, but it's certainly not for everyone. Along with that, we have a new force touch trackpad that provides a handful of new features that I rarely use. The thing is, most all all of these features can be used on a regular MacBook with a three finger click, but nothing is particularly special about them that I just need to use them all the time. If you'd like to check out some of those features, I'll leave a link below to a video that I did on the top features that come along with the Force Touch trackpad. This MacBook is beautifully thin and available in a few different colors as well. I chose the space gray version, but honestly, I prefer the boss executive look that you get with a leather D-brand skin. It's a stunning combination. For productivity though, this is an iPad killer. It's not much larger than an iPad with a keyboard case attached, has a gorgeous retina display, and runs OS X. As for that display, I'm a big fan. The retina display here is awesome. If there's any main selling point for this computer, it's the retina display and the slim and portable design. The display comes in at 12 inches diagonally with a 2304 by 1440 resolution packing 226 pixels per inch. It's a great looking display. At the center of the display's top bezel, you'll find a 480p camera. It's not that great, but it'll get the job done for FaceTime and Skype calls. Along the top edge of the keyboard, you'll find a large speaker grill. These are without a doubt the best sounding speakers on a MacBook. They're pretty loud with nice warmth and treble, and I was genuinely surprised by the sound quality here. Fun fact, there's only one USB-C port and a headphone jack on this MacBook. Sadly, this is going to be a problem for most people. I really didn't have an issue with it though. I rarely used USB ports as it is and most of my files are stored in the clouds. Apple offers several adapters that you can lug around if that's what you need, but I haven't really been bothered by the lack of ports. As I mentioned, I managed my expectations long before this MacBook shipped. Sure, another port or two would be excellent and we'll probably see that on the next model. So save your money until then if that's what you're looking for. Sadly, the size of this MacBook is only possible at the expense of performance. You won't be doing anything CPU or GPU intensive on it. The real story here is portability. I love that about this MacBook. Unfortunately, I can't do really anything within the boundaries of my creative needs on this computer, but I can do everything else. As for battery life, this is another area where you'll need to manage your expectations. It's a small computer made up of mostly battery, but it's not going to get you anywhere near Apple's claimed 9 to 10 hours. I'd usually get around 4.5 hours out of a full charge with the brightness set to around 50%. Fortunately, it charges pretty fast at about 2.5 hours from 0 to 100 and you can even charge it with a portable battery pack and the proper adapter when on the go. Here's the bottom line. Do you need this MacBook? Nope. In fact, there are several other choices available from Apple and other manufacturers that offer more performance for the money. Is it a very cool piece of tech to own? Yep. The 12 inch MacBook is certainly a beautiful piece of engineering and design, but it's not a must have. I love everything about its design, but unless you're using this under a certain set of expectations, it won't satisfy all of your needs. This is the perfect size for traveling via plane and train, but lacks the performance to become my main computer. That being said, it's the perfect sidekick to accompany my Mac Pro. It's a damn good looking computer, but look elsewhere if you need a computer for more than its design. So I hope you enjoyed this review, and if you did, feel free to leave it a thumbs up as it does help out the channel a lot, and also subscribe for more reviews like this in the future. Thank you very much for watching everybody. I really appreciate it. This is Dom and I'll catch you in the next video.